the gospel, uh, John 4. Um, you could either do it while I'm doing the announcements right now, or um, you can uh, do it after we finish. Um, we'll try, as we said, to continue um, this uh, service um, as long as every Sunday and Saturday night, um, starting today, until we can go back and, and pray in the church. Um, uh, if you need um, the church to be open um, for uh, any specific reason, whether it be um, uh, to pray, um, uh, just, just let me or Father Daniel know. We're trying to arrange, um, as His Eminence recommended, uh, times for this. Um, if maybe even we could try, uh, if, if you would like to, um, to take advantage of this service, um, please let me know. Um, or you can even, I think you could raise your hands. <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's an option here to raise your hand and that way we could know um that we, we could know who needs um <clears throat> uh by the way if you would like to i think it would be nice if you would like to share your video but mute until um we have the so we'll give a small uh talk or comment on the gospel and then um we can open it up to um questions and, and discussion after that. Um, uh, some of the Sunday School servants have already started uh, posting um, or sending uh, their information or what they're trying to do virtually for Sunday School. If, um, uh, But we're still trying to organize ourselves a, a, a little bit more, um, so stay tuned for that. Hopefully we have a meeting today after this, um, and hopefully we'll um, we're trying to make it all available in one place um, or the website. So basically, the way we're trying to keep in touch with you as much as we can is the Remind app um, or the email that we send out now. It's more than weekly, um, several times actually a, a week now, um, or the website. So if it's not in one of those places, um, then um, it's, it's not anywhere. <laughs> okay, um, so uh, I think we are... Sorry, I'm having a small problem. Um, for some reason, I have every time someone wants to come in, I have to admit them. Um, and uh, okay, I think I figured out that problem, so um, we should be good to good to go. Um, <clears throat> so we'll start in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. One God, Amen. May the Lord bestow upon us his blessing, mercy, and grace, and wisdom now and forever into the age all ages. Um, as you know, uh, let me try to see if I can share my screen. Hopefully that worked. Um, okay. Um, so today is as we know, um, the middle of the Great Lent. Um, it's the fourth Sunday. And um, if you have been following um, what we have been sharing with you in the last few weeks, we said that we are building up in our spiritual life and the church is starting from the basics, the focusing on the kingdom of heaven, preparing ourselves um, for, for temptation and preparing ourselves for, for the journey, not only for the Lent, but uh, struggling against sin until the end of our life. Um, <clears throat> and then starting from last Sunday and this Sunday, the church says, well, one of the basic um, foundation principles in our spiritual life is to return to God, just like the prodigal son did, uh, as we saw last Sunday, and just like uh, the Samaritan woman did for, uh, today. Um, <clears throat> and after this, we see, okay, now that we are on the road back to God, he fixes all of our problems. He heals us uh, physically and spiritually, especially. And then we see the power that he grants us um, over sin and over death um, in, in the last coming weeks. Um, so, um, as I said, this is the fourth Sunday. We say this is a day of fours because um, we read from the gospel according to St. John chapter four, uh, the first 42 verses. Um, 
And he speaks to her, as we'll talk today, about four main uh, topics of conversation. Um, and since we didn't have an opportunity to, to speak about St. Anthony, we'll uh, throw in uh, a few uh, comments from his second letter and especially his fourth letter um, that relates to the same theme of love and grace and, and how God um, showers us with his love and compassion. Um, as many of you know, this is probably um, a very special gospel that rings out powerfully in our hearts um, of many of the faithful. Even when they think of the Great Lent, most of them, they think of the gospel of the Samaritan woman. Um, and it's, um, it's not because it's the longest gospel, but I think it's one of the most powerful in turn to, to bring the story or the message of the gospel uh, into our hearts. And so the question is, why is it so um, uh, relatable to, to a lot of us? Um, not only is she, first of all, as, as we all know, she's a great model for all of us in terms of change and repentance. Um, and I think also she can, we relate to her in so many different levels. Um, she had uh, a heart to heart conversation with the Lord. Um, and even though it was a few minutes, it transformed her life. Um, and in that conversation, um, he does not just speak to her, but he speaks to all of us. Um, and what does he speak about? Um, as we'll see, sorry, I'm trying to get myself situated a little bit. Um, four things, four truths, the true gift that he grants to her and to all of us, the true change that he wants to see in all of us and that we see outwardly, and then the inward worship that he asks or requests for all of us to offer to him. And finally, our recognize, recognizing him as the, the true God. And so in a sense, these represent the four different stages that the believer goes through to attain the kingdom. Um, or we could also consider them the stages of maturity of the believer. It starts with um, the gift, but oftentimes we don't see that outwardly. So I'd like to start with the second point first um, to see, well, because we all know of the true change, but the, but Christ has her, if you knew the gift of God, what, what does that mean? So um, let's, uh, let's discuss what the, the, the change. Um, before, as we know, this is, a, this is a powerful gospel about transformation. She went from a sinner to a saint. She went from what was a, f a failure socially and spiritually to a very successful person. Um, she went from a person who was looking for love, in, in, as, as the popular phrase goes, in all the wrong places with all the wrong people. But then after this conversation, she realized the love God had for her and she became uh, very, very precious, not only in, in God's sight, but even um, to to the people of her city. She went from a person who was only focusing on herself um, to be a servant, uh, not caring about um, herself at all. Um, she was alienated, she was rejected, she was humiliated, someone, um, but now she's someone that has been honored um, for, for generations uh, and, and generations. Um, <clears throat> she went from someone being lonely to someone filled with love. Um, and how did this happen? Um, it was he who directed her to open her heart to receive this living water, as we'll speak about in a minute. Um, so, <clears throat> um, just commenting on, on, on this, that St. Anthony, he says, Take heed, my children, that the word of Paul may not be accomplished upon us, that we should have the form of godliness, but denying its power. In a sense, she, she might have even had uh, the form of godliness. And some of us might think we're on the right spiritual track because we're focusing on the external things, but maybe um, there's something wrong inside. Um, and uh, this is what St. Anthony is talking about in referring to St. Paul. Um, and he says, uh, well, before I get to that, this kind of reminds us of um, sometimes and I've said this before, when we live in the church, uh, sometimes we, we take for granted all of the, the, the graces 
that we have to the point of we have the form of godliness, but we deny its power. We have the sacraments, we have the scriptures, we have um, the, the, the sacrament of confession and repentance. We have the holy mysteries, the, the, the body and blood of Christ. Um, we have all these things that make us holy and make us strong, but there's something inside of us that might uh, deny the power in it. And because we lack this faith or recognition of the power, then it, it's not, it doesn't work in us properly. Not because of the weakness of the, th of, of the, the sacrament itself, but of, uh, maybe of our faith. Um, <clears throat> so um, we, so St. Anthony continues to say, let each one of you tear his heart, repentance here, and weep before him and say, what shall I render to the Lord? for all his benefits to me. Um, and so this brings us to the, to, the, to the first point about the gift of God. And uh, when we recognize the gifts of God, then it helps us have this external change. Because someone might say, how come I don't have the same transformational power in me as, as we see in St. Fotini or the, the Samaritan woman? Why can't I experience the great, this, this great transformation in my life? Um, how can I push myself to change? Um, uh, well, that's part the, that, that question itself is part of the problem because it's God who initiates the work and we just have to let him in. We have to open the door of our hearts to let him in. Um, it's his strength, not our weakness, that does the change. Um, it's his great love and his great grace. And, um, and so that's what we focus on. We focus on him and not ourselves. We focus on his strength not our weakness. We focus on his love and grace, not our, our sin. Um, and that's what we probably might help us to repent better, um, is to focus on the gift of God. And that's why though Christ said, if you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Um, and also a few verses later, he says, whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst but the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water, springing up into everlasting life. So the simple question is, um, what is this gift? What is this living water he talks about? There's one main answer, one main answer and there's um, a lot of descriptions of what that answer looks like. Um, so um, to give you a little hint, um, uh, in a few chapters later in the gospel, according to St. John, he writes what Christ said in the temple. He said, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Um, same idea here. He who believes in me, as the scripture says, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Then St. John explains, but this he spoke concerning the spirit. So as St. Augustine explains, the gift of God, the main gift of God is his Holy Spirit. Um, and his Holy Spirit is offered uh, to all of us um, constantly, um, especially since the day of our baptism and chrismation. Um, so this is the main answer. Um, but still, on a practical level, um, what does that mean? Um, uh, St. Anthony uh, explains here, he says, he gave himself, according to St. Paul, he gave himself for our sins. And our iniquities humbled him, and by his stripes, by his wounds, um, we were healed. Uh, and by the word of his power, he gathered us from all lands, from one end of the earth to the other end of the world, resurrecting our minds, granting us remission of our sins, and teaching us that we are members of one another. Um, so here, how does the Holy Spirit is... is uh, nurturing us or nourishing us um, with the water of his, his love by the understanding that we were through his spirit um, and through the sacrifice of Christ on the cross, we attain salvation, we attain healing, we attain uh, renewal. Um, and to help understand this a, a little bit more, one of the, in my opinion, one of the most powerful verses of this gospel is in the beginning where it says he needed to go through Samaria. Why did he need to go through Samaria? Because he needed to offer himself to her and, and grant him his love and grant her the recognition, recogn to be able to recognize um, how much he cared for her. <clears throat> and this is what St. Anthony says, God in his abundant love and unfeigned love 
we use this word uh, unfeigned or means sincere um, in, in the divine liturgy as well, um, came to us. Um, so the fact that sometimes we as Christians, especially when we feel weak, we feel that I need to do so many things just to get to God. Uh, but here the gospel is saying, uh, and, and if, if you look at the parable of last Sunday, the prodigal son took a lot of steps to go back to his father. But in the gospel of today, the father came to, to the daughter. Um, and uh, as he came to the Samaritan woman, intentionally to speak with her and to heal her and to give her uh, what she needed um, to give her life to her savior, um, God comes to us. He breaks all the barriers and he needs to come to, instead of saying through Samaria, say to me. Um, and this was the perfect time uh, for her, uh, for him to come. She was not expecting to see or to speak with anyone. She probably expected to live this life of, of loneliness and abandonment um, and, and sin the rest of her life, which is why she was going from one state of sin um, to, to a worse state. Um, but it was the love of God that compelled him to reach out to her. Um, and St. Anthony also, um, in his second letter, talks about this great love that God has for us. He says, the creator of all, in his irrevocable love, um, desired to visit our sickness and confusion. So we're sick, we're confused, um, we're uh, alone. Um, even you can imagine right now, a lot of people feel this. Um, they don't want to get sick. They're confined to their homes. They feel like God, maybe, or people, I'm abandoned, or I'm, I'm, uh, I'm separated from everyone else in the rest of the world. Um, just so magnify that experience, maybe times a hundred or a thousand, or even more than that. Um, and that's how one feels when they're separated from God. And that's how one truly is, God forbid, if, if, if we don't attain the kingdom of heaven. Um, uh, and that was the state of all mankind before the cross. But because God loves us, because he desired to visit our sickness and confusion and heal us, he came. He came to us, just like he came to the Samaritan woman of today. Um, <clears throat> but before he came in the flesh, as St. Anthony describes, he raised up um, Moses the lawgiver. He gave us the word of God. Um, <clears throat> and he founded for us the house of truth, which is the church. Um, so God is continually giving us these gifts. The word of God is a gift. The church is a gift. The sacraments are a gift. Um, but everyone has a personal experience of how God graciously bestows upon his, his um, gifts to each, each believer. And when we feel and recognize that gift, that's what sparks our repentance. Not recognizing that we are sinners and that we're far from God and that we deserve death. That's a component. But, but the main fire that, that lights our love for God and that lights the act of repentance is recognizing how much he is loving us and he gives us despite what we do and who we are or who, who we have become, I should say. Um, <clears throat> so, like I said, she was alone and lonely. Um, she, haven't, haven't, she never experienced what true love was. She was sick in sin and on the verge of death and she was losing hope. And maybe some people, because of this... Uh, uh, staying at home might feel a lot of these uh, emotions. <clears throat> um, but like I said, magnify this more when, when it comes to um, not a virus, but the, the virus of sin um, and realizing our separation um, and our loneliness um, that could not be for a few days or a few weeks, but for eternity. Um, that's a scary thought. Um, <clears throat> so, um, uh, during these times, we, we, we're doing what she was doing. We feel alone. We're under self-quarantine. We cannot go to the church. Um, we, uh, we don't want to get sick. She knew she was sick. Um, but in the midst of all of this, again, he came to her. Um, she didn't want to interact with other people because they would remind her of her sickness or her sinful uh, lifestyle. Um, she was going, again, from one bad state to a worse state. Um, she never expected that her life would change and she, she, did, she, she lost hope in, in the transformation. But when she met Christ or when he came to her, all that changed. Um, 
And uh, this is the beauty of uh, how God comes to us in our state of weakness and lowliness and emptiness and hopelessness. Um, he doesn't want us to stay like this, but he gives us the power uh, to be like him. <clears throat> okay. Um, the third aspect um, is the true worship. Um, as the Lord, so uh, we see this, this conversation developing into, into uh, uh, one level to another. Um, so when we understand how uh, God cares for us so much and, and how much um, that he, he wants to offer us the gift of God and that this gift of God gives us transformational power, then we offer to him our true worship or our true service. And this is why um, the conversation is... Uh, directs us to this he said to her woman believe me the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in jerusalem worship the father you worship what you do not know so he's trying to bring her to the point of the true worship but first he has to tell her you're not doing it right um and uh, he also mentions in the in reference to the book of isaiah these people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips but their heart is far from me and in vain they worship me um so He's telling her, you don't know what you're doing. You don't know how you're worshiping. Um, and this is not something that we can see or evaluate externally. Um, this is just, you know, a, a contemplation. And I don't mean to uh, put anyone down, but I speak to myself. We live in a time where I assumed there will always be a liturgy. There will always be a church open. There will always be the Holy Communion offered. But we live in a time where these churches are, are closed and the communion is not being offered. So we can remind ourselves, maybe, maybe it's because I'm not praying right. Maybe it's because I, I have neglected the, the depth of the mystery of, of the sacrament. Maybe I can remind myself not to, uh, uh, to, to be accused of what the Lord is saying here. Am I speaking to the Lord and honoring him with his lips? but is my heart far from God? Um, maybe I'm going through all the motions, but my heart is far from, from, from uh, the true relationship with God. Of course, the sacraments are important and they are the epitome of our spiritual life, um, but we kind of need to work up to them. Um, it's kind of like saying, um, uh, the only time a professional athlete pro um, uh, plays the sport is when they go on the court and play the game in front of millions of people. Um, that, that's not how it works. So, so if I am a spiritual athlete, the only, if is the only time I pray when I walk into the church, um, is the only time where I feel the connection is when I take communion. No, that, that should be the end, not the beginning. Um, so maybe this is a reminder of how, um, we need to do a lot of the basic things first, um, in order to have a more um, uh, a powerful experience when we walk into the church. So true worship is not just attending church on Sunday or singing a few hymns, hearing a sermon, taking communion. Um, all that stuff is very important, but um, we need God. And we need to recognize that we can find God. He comes to us not just in the church, but in, in our life. Um, <clears throat> and uh, as, uh, as the Lord says, the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father is seeking such to worship. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. Um, so we think we know the Lord sometimes, but we're far from him because maybe we blind ourselves a little bit. Um, uh, once we know him, we will ask of him. Um, and he says, Saint, uh, sorry, Pope Shenouda of Blessed Memory says, grace does not do all the work, otherwise God would not have said, return to me and I will return to you. So there's a component that we have to do and a component that God, God has already done the work, but we have to enter into that labor of, of returning to him. Um, which is, reminds me of, again, the gospel of last Sunday, where the father could have went out and searched for the son, but he waited for the son to do his job, 
to, to recognize where he was and to start the return. Um, uh, so he didn't want to force himself upon his son. So in a sense, God is also waiting for us to open the door of our hearts. Um, okay. Um, <clears throat> uh, St. Augustine um, also says, um, uh, would you pray in a temple? Pray in yourself. First be a temple of God. So now that the churches are closed, we still have the church. We are a church, as St. Paul says. We are the temple of, of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit dwells in us. Um, so don't feel you're separated from God because the doors of the church is closed. The doors of your, of, of your heart can always be open to God. Uh, the Holy Spirit is dwelling in you. You can, you can lift up prayers night and day from, from your heart. Um, um, so maybe again, this uh, set of circumstances is to remind us that God is not far from us. No, no, nothing can separate me from the love of God, even the closing of the church. There were saints who who weren't able, or didn't take communion for for days and months because of their circumstances. Like Saint Mary of Egypt, she was in the desert um, for years. Um, and she only took communion a, a couple of times, like every once a year on Holy Thursday, St. Zosima would come and visit her and, and give her communion. And this only happened once or twice. Um, and uh, one time he came and he, he found that she had departed already. Um, so um, let's not lose heart if we can't take communion for, for one week or two weeks. Um, uh, because... Pray, if we pray in ourselves, when we become a true temple of God and worship him from our hearts, then God is not far from us and, and we shouldn't lose hope. Um, <clears throat> and uh, so going back to the first point is, do we know who the true God is? And I, I don't mean to say this uh, to, to insult, but meaning when I start interacting with God more and more, I begin to understand and see him um, more for who he is. Um, and that process never stops, not even in heaven. Um, we ha in heaven, we're going to take eternity to get to know God even more um, and to enjoy his presence even more. Um, <clears throat> so as we so see just in the few verses of, of the, the conversation with the Samaritan woman, First, she thinks he's, he's just a Jew, someone who's coming to judge her. Um, and then um, after a while, she says, I, I think you're, uh, I perceive that you're a prophet because you know things that, you, that, that I didn't tell anyone. Um, and, and after a while, she, she's saying, oh, I'm waiting for the Messiah. He, he will tell us everything. Um, and at, at the end, he just has to say, guess what? That, that's me. <laughs> um, and um, the same thing happened with this, the, the city of, of Sikar. Um, uh, when she came and preached or, or uh, witnessed the gospel to, to the people, some of them listened, um, and some of them just went to the Christ to listen to him directly. And some of them said, now we believe, not because of what you said, for, for we ourselves have heard him and we know that this is indeed the Christ. So the more we're interacting with God personally, the more we understand who he is. Um, <clears throat> and this is the, the relationship of the believer. Um, and this is why someone like St. Anthony spent um, years and years and decades um, just getting to know God more and to getting... Uh, it wasn't enough for him. He, he left all, went into the desert and um, was enjoying uh, time, one-on-one -on -one time with him for, for, for decades. Um, <clears throat> okay, um, so just to summarize, I, I thought this quote from the fourth letter of St. Anthony kind of ties it all together in terms of, you know, um, the true gift, the true repentance, the true worship, the true God. He says, uh, in terms of repenting, he says, if you know yourself, you know God. Um, and if you know God, you have the true worship. You're worthy to worship him as, as is meet and right. He says, my beloved and the Lord, know yourselves. How do we know? We sit with ourselves to know ourselves. Um, and, and she began to know herself more when 
she uh, sat at the well with the Lord and recognized, um, and she began to know him more after he started revealing these truths to her. St. Anthony says, for those who know themselves know their time, and know, those who know their time are able to stand upright, to be victorious in the spiritual struggle, and not to be moved about by uh, all the diverse uh, tongues, or all the, the, um, the things that are spreading in the world, the, the false teachings and, and whatnot. Um, <clears throat> and the true spiritual worship happens when we speak the truth, when we confess our sins before God, we recognize who we are and who God is. Um, finally, um, we just uh, wrap all of these uh, things up in the understanding the truth but, and the revelation of what is real. So the true gift is the, is the true grace and the real grace that comes from God. The true repentance is the real change that we experience externally and internally. The true worship is the real prayer that we offer from the depth of our hearts in the church and outside of the church. And the true God we know when we develop this uh, personal relationship more and more every day. Um, <clears throat> and so during these times, there's many things that are going throughout our minds, um, like when will all this be over? Will I get sick? Uh, uh, what, can, can we um, endure uh, all this stuff? Um, can we sustain ourselves? Um, when are we going to go back to normal life? Where is God in all of this? Is it the end of the world? Is God mad at me? All of these things are kind of secondary to taking this time as an opportunity to grow together as a family um, in, in, with God in the middle of us. And I think this is the best benefit that we have. Um, <clears throat> try not to overwhelm your thoughts with, with all of the things that are going on outside, but take advantage of the positives that we have. We pray for, for uh, healing of, of every soul. We pray for uh, this to, to um, be over soon. And we pray that everyone comes to know God um, and to love uh, him and to enjoy um, the opportunity to be with, with, with uh, our families more um, during this time. May God grant us the same transformation he granted to the Samaritan woman um, and help us uh, to, um, uh, to have that same experience, not just for one day, but for the rest of our life. And glory be to him now and for the age of